Hi guys, this is Joshua Wompak. Before I start this lecture, I just wanted to say thank you so much for many subscribers here and new viewers on this channel who got me over 9,000 views and over 130 subscribers. Damn, bruh. Let's keep these numbers rising. For the new update, I'll be posting YouTube shorts for you guys, which I basically did one few days ago with Bruno Mars's Leave the Door Open piano cover, which surprisingly reached over 500 views and over 2,000 views on my Instagram reel, which I wanted to say thank you so much for this as well. Also, please check out the Liliki Music Academy student online concert hashtag stay home edition where I edited all the students from Liliki Music Academy and outside of Liliki Music Academy where I really worked so hard editing these videos and these students and the parents worked very hard recording them at home and it is amazing to see this because it's locked down in Sydney during this term so they all had to do their lessons online at home and it's a great honor to see every single student to perform at home so please check it out all right let's start this lecture so as always take care my name is Now, I'm going to speak this individually for HSC students and ABRSM students. Now, for HSC students, you'll be doing either that's going to be contemporary or classical. But I have to be honest to you, contemporary musicians is a very hard genre to do before vocal check. Yeah, it is. But classical music is even more hard than contemporary music. So here's the reason why. Classical music is like a Bible where it existed for a very, very, very long time. Time. It's so damn hard to understand anything from the information because it's from long, 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 long time ago that we are not living in that particular period or in that particular generation. Therefore, we have to read so much of these books that are related to that history right there. Again, classic means a high quality. Therefore, there's so much things to talk about that one genre of classical music because some of that information can be correct or incorrect because some of these literatures can be written by people who either lived with that composer or did not live with that composer or anybody who can be completely nothing related to that composer again classical music is so damn hard because there's too many information therefore contemporary music is even more harder because there's not enough information as much as classical music because it's modern which is why in HSC examination they want you to compare between this contemporary music and this contemporary music but I would say that's even more harder because it's like it's, it's basically asking you to write an essay by comparing the difference between the taste of coca-cola and Pepsi I mean you can say which one tastes good or which one tastes bad but they want you to actually write a 1,000 word essay about the comparison between those two soft drinks. Damn! Which is why both classical and contemporary have different difficulties. But I'll be explaining the difficulty in the ABRSM Diploma Licensee and Fellowship style. It's because that is the real originality of Viva Voce. Trust me, if you learn the ABRSM examination style of Viva Voce, the HSC and the other examinations related to Viva Voce will be so much easier. Because in the ABRSM Viva Voce, program notes are involved. They ask you to write program notes of the pieces that you play in your exam and you have to be talking with the examination relating to your program notes. They're going to be marking on how much you know this information about this piece or this composer, etc, etc, etc. Well, that was a long introduction, so let's go, let's go, let's go! So seriously, what is Viva Voce? Voce is voice in the Italian word. And basically it means verbal examination. Mostly it's something to do with communication between the examiner and the candidate, aka student. So the thing is, everybody who talks about Viva Voce, they start to panic because they don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know why you should be panicking, but everybody panics whenever they see the word Viva Voce. So I'm like, well, let me explain why I react like this. This is Viva Voce. Basically, it's like an interview of your creation or what you have made about your concert program, about this or about that. 
Let me give you an example. Let's just say you make this YouTube video, which I always do, and basically you work so hard on making this video. It took you hours, no, it took you days, no, it took you weeks and months to make this one particular video and it became super successful. And also, you're absolutely proud of it too. Then, obviously, People are going to be asking so many questions relating to the video that you made. So what kind of questions would they be asking? Where did you get the idea from? Why did you specifically use this scene in that video? It's like an interview. Actually, scratch that. It is an interview. It's a communication with the audience or with anybody who is either a critic or someone who is basically inspired by your creation and they want to learn from you. Or it's more of a discussion as a musician to musician or a creator to creator. It's like you're looking at the same level to each other. They just basically want a communication with your creation that you have done. So then what does that relate to the classical music performance? I mean, it seems useless. Like, well, why do you need the communication with the audience? It's like, it's, it's too much stress. Then let me ask you a very simple question that many Vivovoji commonly asks. Why did you specifically pick these pieces in your repertoire? Then what are you going to say? Um, Because my mom told me to. Uh, my teacher gave it to me. I first of all, you should never ever mention about your mother or your teacher anything that is related to Viva Moche. And second of all, you're going to say my mama gave me this piece to me, just this one simple word. It's not even a three second quote. And plus Viva Moche is normally 10 minutes. So. Why don't you ask me the same question, hmm? It's because I'm a big, big fan of Chopin. And the thing is, I know for a fact as a classical musician, you actually need to study Chopin. It's one of those important composers for pianists. And that is why I picked the Chopin edit. But specifically, I picked Chopin edit not by himself because I don't Chopin. But I definitely don't Chopin. I actually need to practice technically because I don't understand what this is. Okay, like, I'm just gonna stop right here. You, you, you get, get the idea, right? So basically, you need that kind of a talk. Like, how many minutes down? I think I spoke for like more than one minute actually for just speaking about that. Yeah, I think I spoke about a minute, and none of them were scripted. Literally, none of them were scripted. Now, when you actually think about it, it's not that difficult. Well, except for people who doesn't use English as their first language. But I guess it makes your mind a bit clear, doesn't it? So seriously, how do you prepare Viva Voce? Viva the resistance! You need to prepare multiple <laughs> questions, basically. So when you're practicing Viva Voce, you need multiple questions relating to the pieces that you've chosen or the pieces that you're going to compare whatsoever. Now, how do you ask questions? Use the basics, the six W's, eh? Who, what, why, where, when, and how. When was this piece composed? Why was this piece composed? Who was this piece dedicated to? Why was this piece dedicated to this person in the first place? When it first premiered, how did it go? Whatsoever. So the first step is pretty easy. Start researching. It could be Wikipedia. I mean, I don't even give a damn if you're gonna search up on Wikipedia because yes, Wikipedia is one of the websites that you shouldn't be referencing when you're you writing an essay and stuff like that. But this is not an essay. This is Viva Voce. And there's some information that you don't even know, like general, 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 general information that you don't even know about this information. Therefore, you need to use something that is the most easiest and the free online encyclopedic website known as Wikipedia, where literally every information is in there. And do you know what's also a good thing about the Wikipedia? Go all the way down to the page and you see the reference, where it basically references any single information. It could go into one of those links that they have referenced. It can get more information that you actually wanted. Of course, there's some other websites where you have to pay for it, but they're really, 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 really good. Like JSTOR, Grove Music Online, or hmm, what else? Ah yeah, Google Scholar, that's one of the most common things that you have to go on, Google Scholar or Google Books or ProQuest. There's so much websites where you can basically look up on any information about the piece, historically, theoretically, practically, etc. Sounds difficult? Search it on YouTube. Basically, anything is on YouTube. Look for some people talking about this piece of music. Look for some other people who like the actual composer themselves or the performers who first performed these pieces, talk about these pieces, and basically you get so much information relating to that piece of music. 
Watch so much information, read so much content, put them all in your head, and paraphrase them whenever you're having a talking, whenever you're having a conversation with the people. Hmm? When your Viva Voce basically has to deal with listening to different performances, like on YouTube or CD or Spotify, or it could be big ensemble works or a massive orchestra or whatsoever. Basically, when you have Viva Voce where you have to listen to other recordings, they will definitely ask you what specific instruments are in that recording. Now, here's a very important question here. What? is tone color. I mean, let's first of all talk about color, okay? Yeah, what does the color got to do with music? Well, first of all, there, well, there's different kinds of colors, right? We got red, green, blue. The thing is, is there only blue? Isn't there different kinds of blue? Sky blue, dark blue, navy blue, aqua blue, sexy blue. Same with classical music. When you're playing C, it's different kinds of C's. This could be loud, it could be soft, it could be harsh, it could be light, or it could be warm. There's different kinds of C's. Just like there's different types of blues, there's different types of C's. The tone color is basically describing the specific sound, or a harmony, or a notation, or phrase, or melody. Something that basically describes the feeling or the expression of that passage. Now, tempo. Tempo is not just about speed, because it also describes how this music should be performed. If you don't know what tempo means, then check out my temp lecture where I basically talk about the music terminology. Not only tempo marking, but also expression marks. Now, go check out episode 5, 8, and 9. Then this will give you some an idea of what is a form in music. Know all about this. Key signature, time signature, articulation, tempo marking, or theme, format, key signature changes. And literally all of this, I have explained all of them in my lectures. This one, 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 this one. Yeah, you also have to talk about modulation where I can make a lecture about what you I, I didn't. Um, um, well, um, well. Subscribe to my channel and I will make a modulation lecture very soon as a possibility. So now let me read you on practical and theoretical aspects of this bigger voce. Tempo, fast, slow, allegro, adagio, form, A, B, ternary, binary, fantasy, rhapsody, style. Is it a dance style, waltz style, hip hop style, or is it an erotic style? Expression, scene style, legato, staccato, techniques, alberti base, arpeggiation, scales. I will explain that in the 50 second lecture of what is melody. Harmony, which I already explained in the lecture 18. Okay. Instrumentation, strings, wind, brass, percussion, or if it's voice ranges like soprano, alto, tenor, basses, and so on. There's so much things you can talk about more than 10 minutes. And here's my advice. Act like you know this piece so well. Also, be very confident. Never say the word us or arms or anything that has to give yourself a processing in your head. And if you don't know what the answer to this question is, basically you can just improvise it all along the way. Or be honest, say like, oh, that's a really good question. I didn't think about this question before. Um, but now when I think about it, this book said about this and this and this. Therefore, now I think the answer is basically going to be this and this and this. So basically, get yourself a new pad. Write it down, every single word that you have learned, something that you have learned for the very first time. Put it down, put it down, put it down into the notepad. Now watch all the lectures that I've already mentioned to you, and also watch this lecture one more time, review it, and make your brain turn into Einstein. And let us all get smart! <laughs>